Hey, how's it going, everyone? Brad Smith here with the Relationship Marketing Podcast. We're on YouTube, Spotify, all the podcast plays. Thank you so much for checking us out. I'm here with Gareth Martin. Gareth, how are you today? Brad, I am super well, Brad. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, it's, uh, it's just such an honor. Hey, man, I'm feeling down. I'm not sure which direction I should be going in life. A little depressed. My man, manhood is feeling low. I was wondering if you could help. You need to get outside, bud. You need to get outside. You need to flip and take your shirt off. You need to take your shoes off. You need to do some push-ups, and you need to do some star jumps and you need to be grateful for what you have in life, bud. That is free medicine available for everybody. So everyone can shut off the podcast and go do that. Like forget about the rest of the interview. That's all we need, right? Absolutely, bud. I mean, it's, it's available to all of us. You know what I mean? Like people overcomplicate their lives these days and they overcomplicate health. And, and we've also got this huge disconnect with uh, nature and we need to get out there, bud. We need to get out there. We need to uh, get out in the sun. There's this free medicine um, and just enjoy reconnecting with, with what is available to all of us. I love it. And everyone joining in. Let's welcome our guest, Gareth. He is the owner of Ridiculously Human, which I was on your podcast. And you are, you have your podcast, you help men with, you know, a community and one-on-one -on -one coaching, just some really cool things there. Um, so give us a quick summary of how you're helping people right now. That's what really Relationship Marketing Podcast is. is I like talking to other business owners and say, hey, how are you helping people? What are your clients actually benefiting from working with you? Because somebody listening or watching this, it might resonate with them and how they're feeling too. Absolutely. So I guess it's two two elements to it. So I, I have my podcast, Ridiculously Human, which is where I share stories of other people, you know, their life stories and then things that they are like experts at. And I find that like we we literally have so much to learn from each other, you know, and it's a uh, we don't also speak enough, you know, and we don't listen enough and uh, we need to, we need to all sort of engage in this sort of activity much more. So like through these conversations, I like encourage people to, um, to have conversations, to sort of uh, have this like newfound self-awareness and uh, just to listen to other people's stories. You can, you can learn so much. So I like to share that information with the world. And then with my coaching, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I also do group coaching and I think like in this day and age, uh, people are feeling isolated, you know, like the, yeah. the whole digital world is amazing, but it's also got these sort of negative consequences to it. Right. And, um, I think one of those things is loneliness and isolation and not having like groups and communities like to share things with and to grow together. And, uh, that's my like main thing at the moment is I'm like bringing men together that are kind of lacking a little bit in life, like lacking a bit of direction or community or whatever it is. And I'm um, just trying to sort of get back on track. You know what I mean? And doing that in a group environment as a man is huge. And like, it really is very, very helpful. So those are the two things that I'm doing at the moment. And I love it. It's super cool. I like that too. And I mentioned I was on your podcast. We had a great discussion and I'll make sure I post the link for that below the video and the podcast as well. But you know, what you just mentioned, uh, like a group of friends that you can consistently meet with kind of sticks out to me because it's so hard to go meet a bunch of people for coffee. You know, usually if you go do that, you do one on one. It's just not maximizing your time. But then you're working from home or you're working in the office. You don't have that community of support. So I really like how you bring that bring that in. And I mean, there's so many things that men struggle with now you've got you know, our, my last interview was somebody that helps people with pornography and he built a community around that. Like that's huge online right now. And that can make you depressed and slow your work down. But not only that, you've got the internet, you're just browsing all day. You've got all these promises online. So it makes you hate your job because you, you're comparing yourself to others. So why did you decide to, and I love the direction you're going with this and why did you decide to get into this and start helping other men like that? Well, I, um, I actually left my job as an investment banker about uh, seven years ago now. And I realized that it wasn't really what I wanted to do. It didn't sort of speak to my heart and my soul anymore. 
even though I like, I loved it and I had a great career and I learned a ton and I, I, it was just fascinating to be in that industry. Um, I realized that there was something else, you know, and I've always been really interested in, in humans and psychology and, uh, always just had this element of me that that likes to lead people and likes to help people. And, uh, I tried a million things, but I tried personal training. I tried, um, yoga teaching. I tried meditation teaching. I trained to be a chef. I, I did so many things, right? And then I've, ultimately I, I trained as an executive coach and then I was like, okay. ah, this is, this is what I want. I think I should be doing, you know, it like kind of spoke to me more and it sort of brought in a lot of the other things that I could help people with. And, uh, that's how I got to what I'm doing now. And, you know, it's a constant learning process and constant evolution. And, uh, like I said, I was, you know, I have one-on-one, -on -one, but I also have group coaching and I've only recently started the group coaching and I've felt that the dynamics of that for me is way more energetic and way more like anabolic in terms of the results. So, so that's kind of like how I got into it. Yeah, that's, that's a good story. And you're from South Africa, right? Yeah, South Africa, but I, I live at, I live in Brazil at the moment. Nice. That's, that's pretty cool. We were chatting about that. So the world traveler over here. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, I actually got stuck here to be honest with you, but, um, when, oh, really? uh, when, when COVID hit, um, my wife and I were traveling around the world and, uh, she's Brazilian. And, uh, when COVID hit, we were in Brazil and we were actually meant to be leaving and going to go live in Portugal and starting our life there together. And then all, all of our flights were canceled and then they kept on getting canceled. And then, and then, and then we ended up getting pregnant, you know, and, and now we've got a little baby daughter. So we decided to stay here and yeah, we're actually going to leave in, in the next sort of couple of months, but uh, okay. it's been, it's been pretty awesome. I won't lie. That That's cool. That That's, you know, that's one cool thing about the type of business you went in. You probably wouldn't be able to travel like that if you're an investment banker. So I think more and more people are finding online, you know, school first, you learn stuff online and then building a business around it is huge. You know, we found each other on X and the solopreneur is, is huge right now. But if you specialize in that one thing and can build a good community around it, I mean, that's everything. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, the, the online world and the digital world has created like endless opportunities for people. And, um, if you can do it properly, then you can really create a, a life that is, you know, in terms with how you want to live. And, uh, for me that, that the, the, the primary reason I like working for myself is because of the autonomy that I have over my time and, uh, my, like what I, what I'm able to do. Um, it's not like, necessarily easy going that's for sure like especially in the beginning you you're going to have to grind hard and harder than you ever did maybe in your corporate job so you mustn't like underestimate the amount of work that is required that's for sure but the benefits once you get it right are i mean you can't even quantify them really to be honest with you what do you um what channels because we have a lot of business owners that uh watch this and tune in here are there any channels maybe you've tried that maybe you got frustrated and aren't doing any more like social media or, and also anything that you found success in as well. Um, that's, that's worked well for you. So I'm actually looking to stop using Instagram. Um, just because I don't know, like I'm not finding engagement there at the moment uh, that great to be totally honest with you, but also, I also want to simplify, uh, the amounts of, uh, like ex not exposure, but the amount of like places I have to log into every single day, you know, and, and sort of upload stuff. And, um, I think it's easy to get caught up in like being on every single platform and not doing any of them properly. And I found sure. like, that's part of my problem is like, I, you know, like you're on all these things, you, you, you're doing it, a lot of it, you're doing it yourself and you're just not sort of getting the engagement because you're not spending enough time doing the right things. Um, so I've decided to just hone in on Twitter and on LinkedIn. And, um, that's where I'm going to go from now on. Um, you know, like, yeah, in terms of things that I can say have worked really well for me, um, it's hard to say, cause it's been such a long journey now, you know, um, 
but I think one of the main things is probably like more, it's more like a soft skill than actually uh, any sort of platform or anything. And it's, you know, it's something that you always remind your uh, viewers and followers about, and it's just being as authentic as possible, um, creating video so people can see yeah. you and you're not like hiding behind this mask or this pretend image and filter and blah, blah, blah. But like, as soon as you start doing video, people, you become much more relatable and then people can go, okay, I really dig this guy or I think he's a dick. And that's what you want. You know, you want people to find you or to, to not follow you as quickly as possible because then it's better for yeah. both of you. It's a yes or no, not a maybe, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's really cool. And I love how you brought that up because education, like I think it's less than 1% will actually go take action after they learn something from you. So a lot of people are scared to post helpful and educational content because they don't know the stats that less than 1% will actually go copy and paste it and do it, which by the way, they'll probably refer someone to you or give you a testimonial at some day. But then you have the other 99% that will see that you are helping, that you're not doing sales, that you're educating. And then when they're ready for help, because they know they can't do it on your own, they'll say, hey, how can I join your group coaching program? I tried doing it on my own from your videos, but I can't. So that's that's one thing I think a lot of people get stuck on is not being the helper because they're, they're scared someone will steal it, but no one will. <laughs> they still need your help. Yeah, I mean, that is the, the fallacy, you know, that, you know, you, the the information you share, like people are going to actually do something with it. And it's, it's totally not true. You know what I mean? Well, first of all, probably only like maybe 5% of your followers are even seeing your content. You know what I mean? Right. Because just of the algorithm or they're not even logged in that day or whatever it is. So they're not even seeing it. Um, and you know, then secondly, human nature is to be lazy and not actually follow up and do anything with information that you have. You might just save it as a bookmark or something somewhere. And then you realize, oh, geez, I've never checked my bookmarks for six months sort of thing. And you, and you, so, Guilty. so you, it, it, no, all of us, exactly. We just, we, that's what we do, you know? And yeah, so don't be afraid to put information out there. Like, and it also takes people, they say something like seven to 10 times or something for you to tell them the same thing for them to actually do that thing. So yeah, put it out there as much as you can. And I, I did like how you touched on narrowing down your platforms because it seems like I make two or three pieces of content specific for a platform and then it's just copy and paste everywhere else. So now I'm going from quality on one or two platforms to low quality on Instagram and TikTok just because I copied and pasted it. So, I mean, what's the point? It's kind of like becoming an expert at one thing and then you're known for that one thing, become the expert on those two or three channels and be known on those channels. And who cares about the rest, I think. So that was a great point. But there's, there's so many people on each of these platforms that even if you got like 1% of them, I mean, like if you got like 0.1% of them to buy into what you're doing, you're gonna yeah. do well, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah and you just can't spread yourself too thin because then your your quality just becomes bad and your engagements like you know you're not engaging properly with the people that you should be and and all these things so you've just got to be ruthless actually in terms of uh where you are putting your information and choose what works best for you 100 percent. you shared something very helpful so now i need that free advice gareth so we can pass it along you something very helpful at the beginning. You know, I like to joke around, get the podcast started. Like I'm feeling like crap. I don't know where I should be doing on my journey. And you're like, go outside, take your shirt off, put your feet in the sand. I, I love that. So as much as we talk about social media, YouTube and LinkedIn, that's great for business. At the same time, we're also going to be feeling depressed and stuck and jealous of other people because we're scrolling and we're consuming all that content too. So Let's think of somebody watching, they're listening to this. He's feeling down. He's maybe not sure what direction he should go. First step, go outside, take your shirt off, walk around in the dirt. I, I do that some, every morning when I walk the dogs, I do that. I keep my shirt on, but what, 
What are some other tips you can share with somebody that's maybe feeling feeling like a lost direction in their either life or their business life? I'll go with life, right? Because that's kind of like where my sort of uh, better knowledge is. And I would say, first of all, is to just sort of start being honest with yourself. Like start finding out who it is you actually are. You know, most people are just stuck in this rat race of life. Uh, they've never taken a step back to um, think about themselves because we're in like constant go, 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 go. And um, you're sort of operating in this state of anxiety. So I would like, I mean, it sounds so simple, but I would take a, take a step back, give yourself some time every single day to just start writing down your thoughts. Like what is it that is going on in your mind? You know, because so many of us live in our head and we are like, you know, with, the, with social media and stuff, like you're always comparing your life to all these other people's lives. And there's a great saying where it's like you comparing your insides to other people's outsides. You know, you're seeing this like wonderful life that they're living. And, um, but that's just not true. Like social media is so fake, a lot of it, you know? So I would say just take your time every single morning, start writing down your thoughts, start, um, thinking about what it is that you're writing and um yeah just just create that self-awareness like you know like people just don't have self-awareness these days like like who am i like literally who am i you know like if you if, if i have to ask people that question they'll be like oh mm, uh, mm, no, no, i'm not too sure you know what i mean and like okay cool what is it that you want uh um mm. I also don't know, you know what I mean? Like, and that's, and, and it's, it sounds so simple, but like that would literally be the first thing I advise everyone to do. And also like, you know, have a bit of like a chronological order maybe to, to some of the stuff that you write. So first of all, write down your thoughts. Okay. But then when it comes to the sort of chronological stuff, start writing about your life story, writing about like your memories from when you're young, what you did, write about your parents write about your friends, write about different events that sort of come up and you'll be really surprised at like how good that is for you and, and what sort of doors that sort of leads to and opens up. And that would be my main piece of advice for somebody to start off. I love that. That's, that's really good. I'm like, man, I, how long should I write for? Um, like, does it have to be on pen and paper? Do, can I type it? Um, yeah. any quick tips on that? Like 15 I minutes, would, 30 minutes, or I would, I mean, look, you don't want the barriers to entry to be too high, you know, because once again, humans, <laughs> we, we, we are inherently lazy actually, you know, and, um, that, and I'm not saying that that's like a, that like, like I'm not trying to sort of be negative or anything, but that's just kind of how we are wired. Right. So, um, keep the barriers to entry low. So maybe start off like with say writing for 10 minutes a day, but, but definitely pen and paper. There's a different neurological connection uh, when you have pen and paper, as opposed to sitting down and typing on your keyboard, you might be able to type quicker, but that's not the point, right? There's a different, like I said, the neurology is different. So I would say start with 10 minutes a day and, and then, and then, and then you'll find, you'll be like, maybe you'll, you'll go, okay, yes, yeah, I can do, 30 minutes a day because you just start enjoying it more. You start feeling yeah. the benefits. So that would be kind of like where I would start. Okay. That's good. Like, oh man, my hand's going to hurt. I never write only for birthday cards. Yeah. And, and you'll be surprised at how bad your handwriting is too, but <laughs> <laughs> it's really, I'm like, man, I forget that italic stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like cursive. It takes you back to being in, in primary school and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and that's the exactly. thing. It's like actually, the physical process of writing is actually quite cathartic. So it's worth, yeah. it's, it's definitely worth doing the pen and paper option. I love it. Now thinking of just, um, that's great personal, but business wise, that's kind of how I help people get started making their first video. It's the same thing. I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. Imposter syndrome. My hair is messed up. I got a pimple, whatever, right? There's so many different things. Well, you know, it took me six months to make my first video. And then my first 
10 videos were awful. I just left them unlisted in my YouTube channel. But one of my first videos gets me the most, makes me the most money. I mess up in the middle. I don't edit it. My hair is messed up, I, but I'm given good coaching, good, helpful coaching. Six years later, it's still bringing me clients and leads. So I think to start slow, like, hey, make five videos, save them as unlisted. You don't have to publish, but by the sixth video, you'll start improving. So I, I love how you brought up self-awareness also. That's something I've really been trying to, to focus on in life and in business, right? So I think that's huge being self-aware. Like, hey, am I even passionate about this career? Am I even passionate about what I'm doing every day? Like, I think writing down, I like when you said, write down your story. Like if I could choose, I'd be doing a business around hockey because hockey has been my life since I was five. So, you know, the sport, hockey, the sport. So that would be incredible. My life would be, but one thing uh, before we move on is I did find out when you do see these people that are flaunting and showing how awesome they are online, go type their name on Reddit. And you'll see that they're, they're all a scam. So it makes you feel not so bad about it yourself anymore. Yeah. And it's not surprising to be totally honest with you. Like there's so many charlatans out there that, um, like, I kind of wonder how they almost um, look at themselves in the mirror in the evening, you know, or like sleep comfortably at night, knowing that they, that they just such, um, they're so fake. Because at the end of the day, like all they're doing, I mean, besides lying to the world, you're lying to yourself. And I don't think there's a worse lie in the world than lying to yourself, you know? Yep. Um, and yeah, it, it blows my mind. feel worse that follow you too. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, um, it, and look, at the end of the day, people are not stupid, right? You can, well, there, there's a great saying, I, I think it was Lincoln or something. He said, you can fool all of the people some of the time. And some of the people all of the time, but not all of the people all of the time, you know, and, and, and that's nice. what, and, and that's what it is. Like you, you can't fool everybody all the time, you know, and people have this like, um, sort of bullshit kind of like, um, what's the word like a uh, gauge, you know what I mean? And they can, they can pick it up, but they can go, Hmm, I'm not sure about this Gareth. He, he's something strange about him. You know what I mean? Like, so yep. they'll pick it up eventually. And, um, yeah, so that's why there's nothing better than just being your authentic self, telling the truth, because when you tell the truth, you never have to remember anything because you're just being you. You don't have to remember a little lie that you told to this person. Exactly. And then you're like, oh, did I tell this person that story? Or, you know what I mean? Just be yourself, tell the truth. And that is what's going to make people want to work with you. hundred percent. That being authentic like that is huge. I mean, now if I wouldn't have already done this and known how good it feels and my wife sees me walking outside tomorrow with my shirt off barefoot <laughs> she might think i'm i'm listening to some crazy guru you know but i <laughs> i already know that i already know how good i feel after i've heard it from a couple other people too so i i actually do it and feel great after you know just connecting with with nature like that is huge but yeah i love how you're taking a uh, authentic approach in your business can you share maybe a story of someone you've helped maybe that's was struggling came to you, whether it was one-on-one -on -one or group coaching or whatever, that maybe you were able to help somebody listening or watching might be feeling the same way. So, so the most uh, recent is probably the, I guess, some of the most important for me because I've just finished my first round of group coaching. I've been a one-on-one -on -one coach for like seven years and I've always wanted okay. to do group coaching. And I just started my, I just finished my, my first eight week program and the guys there are literally dropping their testimonials like from yesterday. And I mean, one of the main things that we talk about is actually relationships. Okay. Like mm -hmm. marriages, um, partnerships, but mostly marriages and, um, and guys that have like kind of really lost track with their partners. And there's, there's some very unobvious reasons that these happen and that men have no clue about. And part of my coaching and one of my sessions is to actually let them know, okay, cool. This is what you actually don't understand about a woman and, and your wife. And this is where you've gone wrong. And, um, yeah. you know, like the guys are literally at least, you know, a few of them that were struggling with their relationships are like, there's light at the end of the tunnel that I never knew would exist. You know, my wife and I are talking about different things that we didn't speak about before. 
we're talking about our issues, we're having tough conversations. And I think tough conversations are incredibly important in all aspects of our lives. So, you know, and then one of the elements of the, the coaching that I do is um, we have like a fitness sort of challenge that we do throughout the eight weeks. And cool. guys are like getting their fitness back. You know, they, we, it's specifically designed uh, to teach guys that you don't need like to go to gym for an hour. You can actually start getting in shape uh, with just 10 minutes a day at home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then build up from there again. So those are like the, the sort of more recent things that I've been helping the guys with. That's, I think having the community where they know other men in that community are going to be like, did you mess up? Did you fix it? Or is it getting worse? Like, and also even for you as the business owner, you better treat your wife and family like you're coaching these people. So it probably even motivates you because if you had a horrible family life and you were going, doing the opposite, it'd be hard for you to show up to these coaching calls and be authentic as well. So it's even accountability for us business owners, which is really cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, practice what you preach. I swear, like, you know, you can't, I see it happening way too many times. Like guys will be relationship coaches, but they're not even married. And I'm like, like, what do you, like, how does that work? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, you, you've really got to sort of like embody what it is that you are educating people on. Exactly. One thing I, I found out it just basically working on the self-awareness probably about two years ago is that instead of thinking that I want to change something that my wife is doing, that I change something in my life first and then encourage her. And all of a sudden she changes without me asking. So I don't even have to ask because I think I mentioned this on your podcast that as soon as I found out if I remove something, it will improve something in my life. If I change first, your spouse will change next instead of them changing first and then you change. So I'm sure you coach that, but that's been one self-awareness thing that's helped me a lot. Yeah, you absolutely nailed it. And that's where, where most people go wrong. You know, like they'll, like guys say, they'll be pointing fingers at their wives going, you know, you're doing this and that, whatever, and you should be changing. And, and like, no, you, that's just the total wrong thing to do. Like be the change you want to see. That's literally what you need to do. Exactly. So if you, if you, if something needs changing in your relationship, you must start changing yourself first. And, um, you will see like, ultimately that gets reciprocated. It might take a bit of time, right? You know, because you've been a dick for 10 years, but, uh, you know, like it, 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 it will, like people are very forgiving and, um, and, and yeah, so just be that change you want to see. Uh, and, and, and don't, don't like tell somebody like that they need to be a certain way, lead, lead them that way, you know, yep. um, always take action and people follow that. And one last thing on that also be patient because if you've been one way, a dick for 10 years and you change for a couple of weeks, like don't expect them to notice yet and don't tell them either, but they'll notice as if you're patient. So, which I think is huge because a lot of people, Oh, I did. I haven't done this for two weeks. Like how come you're not changing? Like, well, they probably didn't even notice you changed yet. So give us some time, be patient. Don't even bring it up because be the leader. The silent leader is huge. Sounds like you need to start some group coaching here, bud. <laughs> Come in as the <laughs> guest speaker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> actually, actually, uh, my wife should, not me. <laughs> She's the one that taught me all this stuff. So that was that's helpful. cool, bud. You have a wise, a wise wife. Exactly. That's, that's step one, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we talked about where you're the most active at. Um, why don't you give us uh, your website so people can go check it out and maybe where you want people to follow you if they only could choose one. And I'll make sure I post the links below the podcast. Awesome. Thanks, bud. So, I mean, my website is, um, well, my podcast is called Ridiculously Human. And the website is uh, ridic, R-I-D-I-C-human.com. And the main place I would say uh, to follow me is Twitter, uh, X, sorry. And uh, it's actually under my personal uh, handle, which is Gareth E. Martin. And uh, yeah, that'd be awesome to, to share it. Thanks a lot, buddy. 
cool. Yeah, that'll be in the link below. We're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, all the podcasts, and we even turn this into a blog post on our website. So all those links will be there and um, that way you can reach out. And that's the first step. Go outside, put your feet in the in the dirt and then reach out to Gareth um, on, on his website. And we got to subscribe to the podcast too, right? To the YouTube channel. I'll, I'll put yeah, that one in too. That would be amazing. Yeah, I really appreciate it. That's, that's like one of the things I'm trying to grow at the moment. You know, I've kind of let, I've never really focused on that a hell of a lot. And now I'm like, okay, cool. You've got to sort of start putting the work in here, Gareth. So that would be awesome. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Just don't watch the one I was on. So you don't want to learn too much, you know? <laughs> Full of education, but value bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Gareth, nice chatting with you. Thanks for sharing your insights. And um, if anyone needs some extra help, I mean, at least follow them on X, check out the podcast and start learning some things, start writing notes down for 10 minutes a day with a pen and paper. And um, when you're ready for that extra boost, definitely reach out to him for to join the group coaching. So thanks for joining me, man. Appreciate it. Buddy, you are a legend. And uh, thanks so much for being a awesome host i've really had a lot of fun but so yeah thanks again man it's it's been great awesome thank you all right everyone have a good one and we'll see you on the next episode